Welcome back to the Aussie Prepper channel and welcome back to another Aussie Prepper video. Uh, here we go again. Okay, that's better. Now, today we're going to get started on a whole new series of videos. We're going to be talking about knots and learning how to tie essential knots. Now, not only preppers, pretty much every person out there should be able to tie a decent knot. Now, one of the most important and basic ones is called the clove hitch. Now, basically, a clove hitch is two successive half hitches tied in a certain way. Now, history has shown that the clove hitch has been used for over 500 years. There's depictions in old literature and the like that show clove hitches used in the 1500s, early 1500s. And, um, you know, most likely it was used even before that. Now, something to be aware of, and most people don't realise, the minute you tie any sort of knot into a rope, you're reducing the breaking strain of that rope, i.e. the rope becomes weaker. So if you've got a rope that's got a breaking strain of 200 kilos, once you tie a knot in it, that breaking strain is greatly reduced because the actual tying of the knot will weaken the rope. Now, there's a specific formula to work this out and also different knots will affect breaking strain in a different way. But a general rule of thumb is that any knot tied into a rope will reduce the breaking strain by 50%. Now, it's usually less than 50%. Like, the clove hitch is about rated at, I believe, off the top of my head, about 60%. However, that's for brand new rope. Now, if you've got used rope, old rope, um, that already comes down. So just as a safety margin to cover yourself, if you're using any sort of rope and you're tying it, whatever breaking strain the rope is, halve it and you'll be safe. Okay, that's just a good rule to play with. If you're going to tie the rope around something and lift something off the ground that's 100 kilos, then, you know, you probably want to use at least 250 kilo rope to be safe. And even then, I wouldn't really be standing underneath whatever you've lifted up. Okay, so you got to have a safety margin when you're using ropes and knots. Just to give you a little bit of my background, where I'm coming from, I'm actually a class one qualified rigger. Therefore, I've learned how to tie knots correctly. And I have also worked as a rigger for around 15 years in the construction industry. I'm also height rescue trained and confined spaces rescue trained. And in all this training, you learn how to tie knots and you need to be able to tie knots quickly, effectively and you've got to be able to do it safely and reliably because in height rescue you might be rescuing someone off a radio tower at 150 metres up in height. Um, now I've also spent a lot of time working on radio towers. I've spent a lot of time up on towers 50, 100, 150 metres tall in my younger years. So I do have quite a decent background in working with knots and ropes. Okay, I used to work with cranes, we used to sling up loads and um, install stuff on radio towers. I used to build radio towers. So I'm a qualified rigger, I'm rescue trained for height rescue, I'm rescue trained for confined spaces rescue. I've also done some rock climbing in my younger years, so there's more knot tying involved in that. So based on those qualifications, I feel that I'm more than qualified. Uh, here's one of the dogs. Just coming to annoy me. I'll just oh, off he goes. So based on those qualifications, I feel I'm more than qualified to teach you guys how to tie some knots safely. So let's go and tie a clove hitch, and I'll show you how to do it properly. Here's the tie down rail on my trailer, and I'm going to show you. Here's a bit of rope. I'm going to show you how to correctly tie a clove hitch. Okay, you wrap it around your tie down rail, you pass it over the top of the rope there, around the rail, and up through the hole, forming that sort of shape there. And then we'll dress the knot up. 
to be nice and tidy. Always stress your knots, make these tidy, okay? Don't just roughly tie something. And there's your clothefish. Now, a clothefish, the problem is it can still slip, okay? You start loading that up, that's pretty secure. And it's only secure because I'm using good quality rope and because I've tied it properly. Now, generally, what you would be doing to make it 100% secure, or as secure as can be, tie another half hitch around the load bearing rope, and again, dress it nicely so it's nice and neat. Okay, now that's it there. Okay, it's not going anywhere. Okay. Now that is actually called the clove hitch and a half hitch. Now this is a proper way to use your clove hitch with a half hitch when you're tying your rope off to a tie down rail on a trailer or truck or anything else for that matter. Okay, this is quite secure and it's not likely to come undone. Especially if load is maintained on the rope, it won't come undone. Now the good thing about a clove hitch is generally it's quite easy to be undone. Okay, even after you've had a lot of um, weight on it, you can generally just undo it like that. And it's all undone. Now, before I end the video, get yourself a bit of rope like this and learn how to tie the clove hitch that I just showed you how to tie. Okay, it might just save your life. Or if it doesn't save your life, it will come in really handy next time you need to tie something down onto your trailer or you need to tie the end of your rope off to something or secure the end of your rope to something, even around a tree, to pitch a tent or anything else for that matter. Okay, if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please do me a favour, give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to smash the subscribe button for more videos from the Aussie Prepper channel. Thanks for watching and bye for now.